Hi, Sneak Peekers. We're here with two of the top men on the film, In Our Nature. With me is writer and director Brian Savilson, and also exec executive producer Anis Savjani. The film opens up here in Austin at the Regal Arbor Cinema. All right, now, I would like to start off with uh, you, Brian. Could you tell us uh, what the film really focuses on, what it's about, really? That's an excellent question. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's a character study of four people. It's two couples on the verge of major life decisions. And it happens to be a father and an estranged son and their two girlfriends. So it's kind of about a father and a son at the same place in their lives, both about to start new families. And I uh, guess the question that it raises is whether or not you can start these new relationships, these new families, without kind of resolving the issues from your your first your original family mm -hmm. now I know uh, for that your background is mainly on the Broadway stage since you worked on a raisin in the Sun a few years ago and uh, really since you wrote this uh, movie it kind of does seem like a play it's only one setting four characters really uh, I know you get asked this a lot uh, but you said the reason you want to make a movie was because a play cannot capture the subtle nuances like a film can. So what are those subtle nuances yeah, that uh, you that, talk about? That's exactly right, yeah. I mean, I think it's, yeah, I've been accused of, of, uh, of making a play on film. Um, and on, on some level, that's true. Uh, but those nuances are these moments that take place between the lines, I think. So if you see like a subtle flash of anger or embarrassment, um, something that you can only read in a close-up, for instance. And, and those are my favorite moments in the movie. And in fact, for all the talking, um, the silent moments are, are the ones that maybe because there's so much talking are the ones that I enjoy most. So I think, yeah, I think I think it's a great way to put it, the subtle nuances. I like that. All right, cool. Thank you. I'll get back to you in one moment. <laughs> uh, Anish, I'd like to yeah. come to you. Sure. Uh, the odd thing about this film is that it's only being released in uh, Austin and New York. Mm -hmm. uh, now, being a local Austinite for a few years back, why did you choose to only release this film in Austin and New York? Uh, it's something we work on with our distributor. It's sort of like how it performs in both cities will sort of be what what it's contingent on for it to expand wider. Um, and it's also, you know, incredibly competitive time, as you know, for theatrical releasing. But we started with these two cities. We see how we do, and. Uh, if we do well, then we right. expand to other cities. Yeah. So that's in conjunction with our distributor. Okay. Do you feel like Austin is now becoming one of the main film starting off points from any independent filmmakers? Um, yeah. Or? I mean, I think New York and, and L.A. tend to sort of be places to start because they really help um, with national reviews. And I've always felt like Austin's very strong for independent films. So oh, I, uh, I always try to make it a point to play in Austin if we can. Yeah. And now, uh, back to you, Brian. Um, I've really noticed in the whole film that it focuses, like you said, a lot on the father and son relationship. Uh, did you take any influence when writing this film from your own uh, relationship with your father <laughs> and son? Uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, it's my, my dad has now watched the movie <laughs> several times, of course, and it's always always an awkward moment afterward where we don't know what to say to each other. But um, it's in it, the father's played by John Slattery of Mad Men and the mm -hmm. Sun, Zach Guilford, who is a, a kind of an Austinite. He was here for um, Friday Night Lights for six or seven years shooting that. And, um, and I guess people, people interpret, interpret more, you know, more autobiographical elements than there are, I think. So uh, I think it would be safe to say that my relationship with my father is good, nothing, okay. nothing like the contentious one in the movie. However, there's a central plot point in the film where, um, where the, the house that they spend a lot of time in together is being sold, and that's revealed, and it's a, a, big, you know, a big conflict between them. Um, and after I made the film, my father actually did sell the house that we all grew up in. Uh -huh. And another kind of plot point is that the father is marrying this younger woman. And after I made the film, my father did marry a young woman. Well, he was 70 and she was 65, so it's not quite the same kind of thing. Um, but they kind of happen around the same time, and so people conflate them and they think that I made the movie about, about that when actually he was copying me. Uh, one final question for the both of you. Do you have any uh, inspirational words of wisdom for uh, up-and-coming film directors or producers or writers or anyone trying to make into the industry? <laughs> um, head for the hills. No, I think I think I, I think I would say that you, sh you shouldn't you shouldn't listen to anyone. You should just do exactly what you, what you want to do, and uh, that's the only way you'll get anything done. Yeah, on that note, I mean, the same way Brian is just be aggressive and, you know, have a lot of tenacity and just keep pushing and pushing um, and, uh, and never take no for an answer, really.
You ever think there's a difference between not saying something because there's nothing to say? I'm not saying something because there's just too much. Seth, I would offer you some wine, but uh, there are little bacteria in here that ferment the grapes, so probably don't want to kill them. <laughs>